What's going on, everybody? My name is Eric Velasquez. I'm the host of Almo City Agenda. We are back for a new season. First episode. Um, yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and sorry. So this is different from what you're used to. Uh, you normally used to me in a different, like my my own space. So this is different. We're in a studio now. So, um, yeah, I'm grateful. And uh, so we're here to interview our first guest. Miss Ina Minares for she's she's your state rep right now. I am a state rep right now. And okay. I'm gonna say, Eric, thanks for the pressure. I didn't know it was gonna be the, the first episode guest, but thank you. <laughs> for the season, for the season. For the season. For the season. That's for the season. a lot of pressure. It is, yeah. So no pressure. <laughs> so you are running for, for county judge. For Bear County Judge, yes. Tell us why. Why would you want to do something so I mean, it's not crazy because you're already a state rep. So what what made you want to do that jump from state rep to, to Bear County judge? Well, it's something, it wasn't an easy decision to make. I had to weigh the good and the bad. Um, I was in Austin for the last legislative session mm-hmm. and enjoy, enjoy my work as a state rep. <clears throat> There's a lot that I do in terms of the issues that come before the state are going to be very similar issues that come before the county, right? Mm. You've got to deal with a budget. You've got to deal with issues like transportation, health and human services, public health. So I had had that special, you know, training at the legislature, but you know, we were going into a real difficult uh, session where. Mm. You know, we we were dealing with uh, redistricting. I was the one yeah. member on that committee. Um, we were dealing with an elections bill that was very controversial, um, and just I, I felt that in prior sessions it was a wonderful place to be because we could work across the aisle. There were as much as we're you know diff- there's Republicans and Democrats. Um, I love the state house because no matter what, yeah, we had our fights, but at the end of the day. We were friends, we could work on issues that we cared about. And I just saw a change happening where mm. things became very polarized. Um, you saw where there was a quorum break, you mm-hmm. saw where mm-hmm. we had three special sessions. Um, and so the opportunity came where I had heard rumblings that Judge Wolf was gonna retire. And so there were people that were reaching out saying, you know, Ina, if this happens, you should seriously consider coming back and leading the county. And so when he made the announcement, I put together a group of people, an exploratory committee, um, to see if I was even a viable candidate. Um, And after that, in talking to people that I respect and constituents, I decided, hey, I have the skill set, I've got the necessary experience, and I can come home and lead, and I can actually get things done here, Mm -hmm. I think. And um, that's, that's really how the decision came about. That's that's crazy because it's you think about all the things that you have to take take consideration, right? I mean, you're looking at how's your family going to handle it, like you know, cause there's a lot of pressure with that. You it's know, a lot. what what are you going to do? You know, there's a lot of different factors. So I applaud you for that because it's it's definitely something that not a lot of people are willing to do. Well, um, it's hard to put yourself out there, but as I mentioned, I could have with redistricting my my house district. Uh, they ended up making it more blue it's blue already Mm -hmm. but they packed more democrats uh democratic voters in there i could have easily sat happy you know for the next 10 years in as a state representative but if i'm going to sacrifice my my personal life wait time away from my family i want to be effective i want to get things done and i like the challenges of it and so that's why i decided you know i'm going to come home and actually work on things get things done I have to be productive. I don't like to just sit there and <laughs> not, right. get, not not work. So. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, um, and I'm going old school, by the way, with paper notes, so don't don't judge me. Um, so, what are some budget items that you want to see on the upcoming budgets? If you know, if you do get elected, what are some things that you would like to see come up? Well, you know, one of the there's a, there's a lot. So the budget. In Bear County, if you look at it, I mean, the county's responsible for a number of important things. One, the courts, you know, funding the jail, um, our university hospital, there's a lot of need. And so what I'm hoping at looking at is I wanna look at at the current budget, how have decisions been made? And most importantly, where has the public input been? I, I have not, I've not ever seen it, you know, as, as, a, as a member of the Committee on Appropriations, so I handle the state budget yeah. on behalf of Bear County yeah. in Austin. 
we have a lot of public hearings. We have people come testify about whether they feel it, it's adequate. Is the money there? Why, why is something being funded and not this important right. being funded? Right. I don't see that happening on the county level. I don't believe it's ever happened. Yeah. And so things have not been as transparent as they should. And, and this is this is taxpayer money. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, for my for myself, we need to look at what what have been the priorities of the past, listening to public input, and then deciding, you know, where should that money go. But I think one of the most important things we need to talk about is our housing crisis. You know, we've got we've got a homelessness crisis. We've got people who. Um, cannot afford a home. Um, you've got people, affordability is a real problem now. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I feel the county is going to have to start taking a leadership role and addressing, you know, affordable quality housing for families here. So yeah. that's one thing I hope that we can definitely look at. Yeah. And, and you know, just recently for people who don't know is um, the, the county commissioner court just passed a $5,000 um, property, property tax reduction, but $15 for the year. So, I mean, it's not it's not a lot, but, you know, what are some things that you want to see or do you think that we can do at the Bear County level? I know a lot of the state level you have to do with property taxes, but what on the on the Bear County level can we do to still like help homeowners to, to, to relieve that property tax? Well, property tax relief is something that, you know, our community has been wanting. They don't want these tiny amounts, right? They want meaningful property tax relief. Um, and fortunately, the way I feel, the state of Texas doesn't hasn't done its fair share of having of addressing it. Um, they've done, you know, they've done some fixes here and there, but they've never truly sat down and said, "What can we do to help our home our homeowners?" Right? right. And a lot of it is the state of Texas doesn't fund its fair share of public education. Um, and I feel that as, as a member of the court, we really need to go in the weeds on this. We mm. need to really, I don't, I'm not talking about a task force. I'm talking about you know, getting experts on this, getting feedback from the community and working on something meaningful, not a $4 a year savings. You right. know? Right. We gotta look at the appraisal system. That, is, that in itself is something that- Which is, is like buying a, a car right now. You have to really like, put on your buying a car hat because you go in there, you're being interviewed by like four people and you're, you're like, <laughs> right on a, you're, it's like a, you're, you're in court or something. So right. that's what it feels like. But you know, when you talk about that, there's a lot of people that don't know how to fight the property they taxes. Don't. Right. And so that, that's something that I did on, on my, my podcast is I showed people, I actually had an interview with the, um, the head of the a BCAD and, giving you tips to do that but at the end of the day it's still still not enough because there's a lot of stuff people are, are working you know, people, people are working they can't take time off right. to go you know fight these fight the taxes okay. they don't know how to do it right. um it, it's 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 stacked up against yeah. you know against the common person that wants to go get some relief yeah now you were asking about ideas and things like that so why can't the county and the city work together to be able to stop giving property tax abatements to these businesses that are coming in to try to build something in exchange to give something a little bit back to the community? But at the end of the day, it's still not fair for the for the people itself. Right. So they're called like incentives, right? Yeah, it's yeah. incentives to, <laughs> for these companies that come in and or, or developers. It, it's it's an issue that has really never been addressed, and I don't necessarily understand why um, the city and the county have not really taken a, a, sec, a second look. Yeah. Now I know they feel like this is a tool, right? We need all the available tools in the toolbox, but at what point do you start to hold? Uh, the person or the company or the entity responsible when they don't comply with right. the promises that they made to the community. Right. Um, and that, that right there is, is concerning to me. Yeah. Um, and again, it, it, it there, the will has to be there for mm -hmm. the county and the city to want to do that. Um, I think that there is a way to get there, but again, that is a problem that is <laughs> front and center. I've had constituents not happy with it. Um, but I think that there are good stewards, right? I think there could be, if there's companies coming in and they are offering good good paying jobs, um, 
good benefits, you know, investing in the community, um, then they should be rewarded. But the ones that just have fallen and don't comply, like there the Grand should Hyatt. be <laughs> right. They should be, you know, there should be should be a penalty there. Right, right, definitely, yeah. Because the Grand Hyatt was, I was just like, wow, like that's that's a mess. Um, okay, so for the proposed budget, and I, I pulled this off of the Bear County judge or the Bear County um, budget. The personnel services for per, for county judge was about five hundred seventy thousand dollars proposed, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's a hundred thousand dollars more than the estimate was. Is there something that you would like to see to go look and see why there was such a big amount, a big jump? Because they they did say that there was a justification for it because they wanted to add more employees, which they only added one. Okay. Um, and then the ability to uh, in, they, oh, and there was no inc no raise in workload, according to the estimates. There was no raise in workload cases, nothing like that. Um, so I just want to see like what would you like? Would you like to go in and see why there's this big jump in in the personnel uh, uh, administration operational costs? Yeah, you. It, so what's important is there needs to be an audit, right? Yeah. There needs to be a thorough audit. I hate wasteful spending. I hate duplication. You know, we owe it to our community to go into, like I mentioned, going into the weeds, getting into the budget, mm -hmm. and really going with a fine, fine uh, comb. Tooth comb is like going in there and seeing, and questioning why the expenditures. What? Why? Why was there such an immense jump like that? Um, but that again, I, I don't. Did it say what department this was for? That was for county judge for only. County judge, for yeah. Only operational services. So that's. I don't know why that would be. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, I, if it's not something that's not needed, I have no problem getting rid right. of it. And, and I understand because like, you have to be accountable if right. people ask you. Yeah. Right. And, and I understand that there, there's a need for like, you know, maybe increase the amount of people working there. But it was only from what it showed. Proposed an actual was only one person per department, right? That's, that's county judge, you know, commissioner and everything. So it's just like, why is such a big jump? You know what I mean? Right. So it, it's just, it caught me, it caught my eye. And especially now that they said that there was about a 12, 12, $12 million increase from last year to this year, you know, so there's more in that, in that budget. So it's just. What could be, what, what is the responsibility of this, of this employee what are what are the mm. what's the role of this employee? So there's a lot of unanswered questions right, there right. that we would have to ask. Okay. Right. Um, so you were in Austin, yes. Right. Who has the better tacos? Austin oh, San Antonio, San Antonio. Antonio okay. has the better tacos. <laughs> Come on. Sure. I just want to make sure <laughs> that was the test. Oh, we have the better tacos by far. <laughs> I don't even. I think I, I, if I get offered an Austin taco, I don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, what is your favorite place to go get a taco in San Antonio? Uh, taco Jalisco, right by my house on Culebra. Okay. Yeah, okay. that is my that is my go to place every week. And what's your what's your go to uh, plate or, or taco? I love my chicharrón in, in salsa. Oh, okay. I love uh, my chorizo uh, and bean tacos. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Those are my two. Okay. Yeah, chorizo con papa. That's good. <laughs> My, I'm, I'm strictly just bean and cheese. Just bean you don't and change. cheese. No, I, <laughs> hey, don't judge me. <laughs> um, so, uh, do, do, do. so, like you were saying earlier, a lot of people that I've heard say that the budget sessions are not accessible. What are some things that you would like to implement to make them accessible to people? Well, I think public hearings I think we need to definitely have them but I it's it's hard to get to the courthouse where commissioner's court is for people maybe it's going to be traveling and in the different precincts and having public hearings there mm -hmm. so people can have the ability to go actually attend one right um, I, I think that's re really important I think uh, providing uh, proposed budget breakdowns you know online um, and now we have a digital divide, so that's not going to get to everybody. But I really think what's crucial is, um, you know, I would love to see the different, you know, commissioners and myself having, you know, public town halls as well mm -hmm. on the proposed budget, you know, going to different neighborhood associations, doing a breakdown, showing, showing the public what we're proposing and then taking the input 
right. after they presented that proposed budget. Um, I think these are ideas that um, you know we've done in Austin that we could definitely implement here. Yeah, because I've seen a lot of the a lot of the elected officials out at events, right? Right. But not so much at neighborhood associations or right. you know or whatever it is. Yeah, like. I'm like you. I there's people that I have a I'm a little different. <laughs> um, there's people that want to be seen at galas and taking pictures at galas and taking pictures. You know, that's great. But if you really want to be in office and you want to gain the trust of your constituents, you have to be going to neighborhood associations. You've, you've got to be at those kind of um, important meetings where the community is sharing their thoughts and sharing their gripes if they don't like something. Um, you know, that's really key in order to, you know, why that's, you know, why they go is because that's where the donors are at. (laughs) That is true. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, so it, it, oh, it increased by 4.7% was $22 million added with no prop, still no property tax release for the homeowners until just recently. But, um, so yeah, so we want to make sure we try to get the city and county together. Like, I, I just don't see... Well, if you... I never saw before um, the county and city working together. Mm-hmm. It, it, I saw that, that um, unity happen as a result of the pandemic. Right. Okay? Yeah. So I think that's, the, that's something good that came out of the pandemic is the fact that the city and the county recognized mm-hmm. that they need to work together together. Um, and, and I hope that will continue, and that's one issue that they need to hopefully focus on. But right. I hope, too, if, if elected, is you know continuing to work with the mayor, working with the city. I want to make sure we're not duplicating <laughs> services again. Yeah. Uh, what they're good at, let them continue working in that area. What the county's good at, let us continue taking the lead on that. But I think we can definitely be a strong partnership, again, if the will is there on both parts. Right. Yeah. Um, so with the pandemic and this is going to be i know this is going to be a hard subject because with the executive orders that that the judge did with the um, with closing a lot of uh, places and things like that and what was your take on that now in this space like in this time frame do you think that was still beneficial um especially with the implement like the the effect it had on small businesses right yeah. we saw the big businesses walmart and everybody they were still open but a lot of the small businesses really took a big hit they did so do you do you see something like that that could have been handled differently or do you, do you think i think that was look that was hard we didn't know what covid was we didn't know we were all living in fear um at the time of under the administration we had, I mean, there were a lot of unknowns. We didn't know if we were gonna die if we caught COVID. Um, I think I think the judge did what he needed to do at that time. Um, it's now, now we can look back and say, what can we learn from mistakes that were made? But most definitely, I think um, there were small, small businesses and what I mean by small businesses are the small mom and pop shops yeah, right those yeah. are the, the true small businesses that I think did not have a voice in the situation um, I don't know if they had access to uh, the commissioners or the county judge to say hey you know we're about to lose our livelihood here and we're never going to recover um, and I think those are lessons learned now and I hope you know in the future I really want to make sure that they're included in any kind of decision making made um, they put their whole lives, you yeah. know, their whole lives into their businesses, their whole life savings. Um, and I don't want to see that happen again, where if we end up with another pandemic or we have another surge that they get hit right? and they're out of business and can't recover. Yeah. So, and, and there was a lot of businesses, especially on the South side, the East side and West side, west side. that if you looked at the map of where a lot of these, these small businesses got these grants or these, these small business loans, none of them were on the south side there was very few and it's because they had no idea nobody reached out to them you know and, and i don't know what what the end of the, you know what happened where the breakdown of communication was right maybe it was a digital divide right right you know a lot of these mom and pops they, they literally they don't have they're taking apple cash pay. only right they don't have <laughs> apple pay yeah, yeah. they do cash yeah. only and they, they just like you're writing your notebook that's right. how they keep their accounting don't judge me <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so, and they, they didn't yeah. have access, you know, right. and, and, 
and and so it's really important that they have a partnership so, you know if it's some the, the maybe county city giving them you know giving them insight giving them advice on how to how to get their business going at a more you know right easier well, way I, but. and do you think there's something that um and i don't know if there is or not because i haven't seen but is there anything with the bear county that has an office of resources um because i i've seen like the west side development corporation mm -hmm. there's um the south side business associate or i forget what it's called but um there's different organizations that try to do something like they would hand out signs to say hey we're open is there something that you think the the county could do along with the city to help things like that yeah i mean like i like i mentioned you you have to look back and and see where did the county succeed where did the county not do so well these are again lessons learned mm -hmm. and we have to start implementing a plan that in the event there's another emergency right. hey this is the plan that we need to go by and i think again i think we always expect people will people come to the government for help all right yeah. at what point does the government go to the people right and a lot of it is old-fashioned going on knocking on doors visiting these businesses and saying these are the resources that we have available to you we want to ensure your success we're cheering you on we believe in you and we're investing in you you know show how let us know how we can be of a partnership to you and i think that's what it is is that i think people feel you know business owners small business owners feel like they don't have a champion right and why am i going to go seek help i don't believe help truly is there right that it's something valid yeah and so there needs to be i think a, building a new relationship showing the, that we're invested in these small businesses, we want them to succeed. When they succeed, I mean, can you imagine economically what right. we'll, we'll be? Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a win-win. And, and, and you know, I get it. Some some of the businesses, they're like, I don't need help. You know? I don't need help. I, I get yeah. it. You know, it's, it's very much, but at the end of the day, we should be okay with asking for help. And imagine, you know, like you, you brought up a good point, like the grants that were available, you know, great. By the time you went through the application process, it was so burdensome. I mean, they wanted years of records, years yeah. of records from these small business owners, and it just became too much that they just didn't want to apply for help anymore. Yeah. And it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Um, you know, the funding available for these grants, these programs, they, it dried up. Yeah. <laughs> right? And wow. then you saw, you know, like federal loans where small businesses like Ruth's Chris, yeah, small businesses yeah. like you know yeah. some mba teams getting that money it yeah. really ticked people off right right yeah well and there was a report that came out that was like there was several cities that were you know they were doing like audits and it was like buying it was it was ludicrous it was ridiculous of what mm -hmm. they were using the money for and it's just like wow like all that money it, it's kind of like the in the military we had the fraud waste and abuse right right where we had um if you don't if you don't use it you lose it so you would just use just whatever you can it. yeah just spend it and i think the government is like that as well you just oh we have this budget let's spend whatever we need to spend if not we're going to get it not going to get it next right. next year right and it's a terrible way of doing it because it's that's where it leads to a lot of waste a lot of waste and people get angry yeah and then there grows the distrust right exactly yeah. um so with small businesses segue into this mm -hmm. uh what is your favorite small business like what's what's a good small business that you like that's that's local uh where the cough there's a coffee shop uh barista Co that, okay yeah <laughs> i love them they're the best i love that coffee shop i have a lot of my meetings there they're a wonderful family nice i love them yes um Dan Culebra. i wish they were they were in my house district but they're, i think they're a 125. Oh, okay and what about um what about artists artists yeah <sighs> Because there's a lot of artist groups. In it. And it could be anything. It could be painting. It could be, you know. You know, I, I love, for me, I love in terms like like painting artists or Yeah, local just though, cultural. if you can. Yeah, local. local I love can. Cruz and Olivia. Okay. Ortiz. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what about uh, music? Oh, man. What type of genre, though? Let, let's just go with genre. I love everything. Okay. I love everything. It except, depends on my mood. Except no, I somebody like always, somebody always has an except. An except. <laughs> Mine's country. I'm sorry. No, but I love to dance to country. Okay. So I love everything. I love 
That's hard because I, you will, if I, you, if I gave you my phone, you would laugh at the different types of music that I have. <laughs> you know, if if I was going, you know, if I if I'm going into battle, like a debate battle on the floor, you know, I Tupac. <laughs> Tupac. I listen to Tupac. I love him. I nice. love Tupac. That was my. Those are my college Me too. days. Tupac. I would I would write just like on here. I would write the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was inappropriate, I would still write it. Yeah. Um, okay. But, well, you but, know what? I'm gonna say it. I know. I know what does. What music doesn't? Banda. I I've tried, and I just can't get into the banda music. Banda. Banda. Example. That's all I was like. No. <laughs> I have to look it up. <laughs> I don't know. I I've, I've never heard Spanish it. music with a lot of the, the horn. Oh, the, I've seen them. Yeah. The, usually the guys are driving by with the big trucks, and they're yeah. like wearing I, I, it. Yeah. I've tried, and I, I, can't, I, I can't warm up to it. I've tried. <laughs> um, what's your favorite ev- fiesta event? Favorite fiesta event. I always like Nyosa. Um, King William. So crowded, though. I know. So it's, crowded. it's super crowded. So I would you go on wear, an off day. You have to wear closed-toed shoes, too. Yeah, but I would go on an off day. Oh, I can't. Not college night. No, not college <laughs> night. No, no. Oh, <laughs> uh, and what? You see, King William. King William. That is a good one. I yeah. like that one too. It's also crowded, but that's, it's a, it's a good, crowded. Yeah, it's nice to be in South Town under the, all the trees and. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was oh. What has been, your greatest, achievement. My greatest achievement. Yeah. Ooh, you're asking me these deep thoughts. Mm-hmm. Deep thoughts. Um, I think my my most my biggest achievement I can talk about at the legislature um, was working on David's law. Do you remember when the cyberbullying was happening uh, in mm-hmm. schools? Mm-hmm. We had uh, it was happening specifically. The way I came across that issue was I had a family, the Vasquez family, whose son at the time was in. I, maybe in high school, um, he had had leukemia. So his dad would post pictures, right? Cause he wanted to, he wanted to show everyone on Facebook, just kind of like what, what they went through as a family. Right. When the, the moment he was diagnosed, going through chemotherapy, losing his hair, um, while well, someone took those pictures and opened up a fake account. And they used that account essentially to bully their son and telling him, you know, really? follow, yeah, trolling him on social media, saying you should kill yourself, you're not worth it. And that's, I'm just, I'm giving you the nice right, terms. I mean, right. it got pretty, pretty bad. And so dad came to see me and said, is there anything you can do? Because law enforcement says that they don't, they can't, like there's no authority for them to, um, if they find the person, arrest them. And then within that short time frame, we had David Molak with the Molak family who, you know, committed suicide. So. You know, collectively we worked um, to try to get, first of all, to, to bring recognition to the problem that, hey, the, there's kids in school being cyber bullied, being bullied in schools, and that we need to take action on it mm-hmm. um, before it ends up where this the child victim ends up killing themselves. Yeah. And so in, it, we worked on that, and in the one session we worked on that, we got it passed, and it was, it was a hard lift. I mean, it was a really hard lift because you get people who say, Oh, First give me a break. It's First Amendment. Right. You know, um, these kids should get a, you know, strong backbone. The parent, it's the parents' fault. Well, imagine having to work with so many, you know, different groups, groups that didn't like the bill, people who love the bill, um, needing to make changes on it in order. Because as a, a legislator, I mean, I have 150 of us, okay, in the mm-hmm. state house. I got to sell it to yeah. almost all of them. Right. They have to want to believe in the bill for it to move. And then, you know, Senator Menendez had it on the Senate side and he had to do his heavy lifting there. And to me, that was a big, that was my big, you know, Mm. achievement, I thought. Okay. I was proud of. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Tell me about a story that shaped you into the person you are today. That shaped me into the person that I am today. Mm. Um, Oh, you're going to get me all hokey. Um, You know, my my mom, um, two important women in my life, my grandma, uh, who passed away, but she she cleaned hospitals. Mm. She was a you know single single mom. My grandfather had left you know abandoned the family. I never met him. Um, she had seven kids, mm. and that's my mom's mom. Yeah. Um, and and she worked so hard. Uh, imagine at the time, right? At right. the time, um, first of all, to not have a husband. So people, there's a stigma. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then seven kids and 
doing what she needed to do with no education, couldn't speak English, mm. cleaning hospital rooms. Um, my mom's the same way. You know, she she got her eighth grade education um, and then didn't attend high school. She married my dad when she was 15 because mm. back then that's people got married young. Yeah. Um, and I just really they've molded me to be who I am today. And and the and the belief was, you know, you got to get educated, you got to learn, you got to be vocal, you got to you know defend people, represent people that don't have what you have mm. and you need to be a voice for them. And so I will say that that doesn't really answer the question, but I can tell mm. you the two people, um, the two women in my life were the ones that really mm. molded me into who I am today. How, how easy is it to, to fall off though in the political arena? I've seen it. Um, it's real easy. Look, I believe in term limits and that's not popular. I really uh, believe, yeah, I, believe. I think, I think, I have a lot of respect for a lot of my colleagues who have been there a very long time, but I think the system after so much, the longer you're there, I really think you start to change. Your yeah. belief system changes. Um, you lose sight of why you're there. Um, I believe in term limits. I think, you know, eight to 12 years is enough, mm -hmm. okay? Because um, you do two year terms. Right. And, and you, vest your pension at eight years. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe that you always need to give someone else an opportunity to bring in a fresh perspective. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, you, when you're there, I think you just kind of lose sight. It's like being in a bubble. And I've told, you know, my <laughs> friends this, I said, when you go to the legislature, part of it feels like you're in Las Vegas. And mm -hmm. the reason why I say that is because you're working you know, late into the night, late into the morning, they're pumping all this oxygen into the room, right, <laughs> to keep you awake. Um, there's no clocks on the house floor. Um, it's you're just going and it's just a different lifestyle and you're in a bubble. Um, you don't see your family. But there's a lot of special interest groups that, right, that come in yeah. and, and they're, they're, of course, they're wanting their bills to pass and, and you know, you, you just kind of know what reps or senators are pretty much compromised and mm. um you know it does it plays a part um but I, i'm a big believer in term limits i think you can go do the work and then it's time for you to hang it up and let someone else yeah have a chance yeah and, and how is how important is it do you feel for people to vote to be able to um you know feel like they don't have a say in, in the elections Look, uh, voting, I think, has become where I think it should be a, more accessible. This last bill that passed, you saw what's happened with the mail ballot applications. You know, it, it, it's, it's not encouraging people to really vote. Um, and it, when you put challenges and stumbling blocks, people just give up. But also, when you see incumbents that have been around for so long continue to, to win, it turns people off, too. Constituents mm -hmm. feel like... Oh, my vote's not going to matter he or she's going to stay in there and i they're not going to do anything for us right and it leaves a bad taste in people's mouths um but they've got it they've got to vote and that's unfortunate because the ones that that really control what's going up and going on in austin it they're the ones that are voting right right, right. and so you've got to talk to the community and let them know you, you can't give up you can't get frustrated to the point that you just don't want to participate you know, in, in the political system anymore. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, that's the reason why I created this podcast is because I wanted people to understand, um, me being a candidate as well in 2020, which was the worst year to, to run for office, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, a lot of roadblocks are set up, especially for third party candidates, mm -hmm. um, Democrats and Republicans both joined together to sue libertarian and green party off the ballot if they didn't pay the filing fee i remember that the filing fee though for the libertarian green party goes to the state the filing fee for democrats and republicans go back to the party, party. so it, it's already set up like a like a hurdle already and it, it's really hard for people in those avenues that that want to run for office run who legitimately feel like they they want to bring some change right so there's also that hurdle, and then also with independence, it, it's also another hurdle. So with that, do you think there's something that, that you would like to see done change with the election system? Because Austin just passed last year ranked choice voting. 
it's inoperable because it's illegal to do ranked choice voting in Texas, but we can do approval voting. Is there something you would like to see done with the change like that in elections? I'd be happy to see something like that because you know what, Eric, what you're talking about when you're saying we want to offer the voters more choices, mm -hmm. right? Um, Libertarian Party, independents. My colleague, Lyle Larson, mm -hmm. you know, he left the Republican Party. He's been very loud about now becoming an independent, mm -hmm. and he wants to, he's thrown himself all in into the SAM party. I don't know if you've heard of the SAM no, party. No. Yeah, uh, there's a former candidate for mayor named Bill King. He is very active in that. So they're, they're getting that independent party. A lot of the, the moderates who have left the Republican Party, mm -hmm. um, they're going into that third party. So I, I think, really, I, I, I think the more options, the better. Yeah. I, I, I really think, man, I, you know, redistricting, right? I, I feel... It's terrible. It's terrible, <laughs> and I feel... But, you know, districts should be drawn competitive. I think all districts should be drawn competitively. Mm -hmm. If they did that, we would have more engaged voters, right? right? And, and so I think the, the more choices, the better. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm all for it. Yeah, it was only 15% people yeah. that voted you know and and that's it's that's sad mm -hmm. and i know uh, i think andrew yang who was the democratic presidential candidate he started his own party too yeah um and it's pretty much kind of the same lines like just um kind of for the people kind of thing and it's just people are getting fed up they're disillusioned you know and and, and nothing i guess again nothing bad talking about the the, the two parties i'm mm -hmm. just it's just we just need a little bit more option yeah so. i think op I, I think options are good yeah Right. Exactly. Um, this is going to be a tough question. Okay. What is one thing that you felt that you screwed up? That I screwed up. That you like, yeah, I do not know what I'm doing. And you, you just, you just messed up. Like in life in general or um, at, the, at the legislature? Mm, we'll do legislature, I guess. We'll do legislature. I don't know about, about screwing up something um it's it's really hard like i think there was an amendment that i did on a bill um that it was a, it was a bill and i and i threw like I, it was called like a poison pill amendment <laughs> okay <laughs> so it, it, it initially what it did was um there was a there was a planned parenthood bill and i, I think what it it basically said like the city couldn't give any any funding towards mm. like Planned Parenthood, like, so what happens in, in Austin, they provide, a bill, I think, a building to Planned Parenthood, and, you know, I think the rent was a dollar. So mm. there was a bill to prevent that from happening. So it was targeting Planned Parenthood. Mm. And I think, and what I did, there was an amendment that basically said it, it was going to be a tough vote. It was, mm. the Republicans had to vote, and I wanted that to happen, where it basically said, um, it, it dealt with rape crisis. Mm -hmm counseling and services and it stopped it, i mean it was such a it was such a controversial amendment the republicans didn't want to vote that the speaker <laughs> called for a timeout mm. um and so he wanted uh the d leadership democrats leadership republicans to go to the back and see what they could work out in terms of of the bill um is there a compromise and so i think that was that was interesting because i'd never been involved in something like that mm -hmm. um going you know going to the back and trying to and, and essentially it was like all right if you withdraw the amendment what do you guys want like what mm -hmm. will you you know and, and so there were certain bills that caucus leadership didn't want coming to the floor mm -hmm. um and so when that so there was a deal struck and you know i had people upset about withdrawing the amendment but no one knew that i had to withdraw it because there was some deals in the back made yeah. and I wasn't in leadership in the caucus, mm. but, um, that bothered me. That okay. bothered me. I really wish I had made them take that vote. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think it's important for, for leaders to be able be willing to admit yeah. like I made a mistake, mm -hmm. you know, cause if you have somebody who's like, no, I didn't make a mistake with whatever. No, I it's, mean, it's, it's terrible. we're all human. And <laughs> yeah. that, that has bothered me that um, I, I wish that I had forced the vote hmm. and not compromised okay. in the back. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you plan for rest and self-care? 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wish I fight. <sighs> well, I'm, I'm my own worst enemy on that. So I, um, I always advise people, take care of yourself. Give yourself time and then I don't do it for you myself. You don't do it. Oh, <laughs> man. I, I love working out. Um, I, I'm a big Orange Theory freak. I love it. I, my friends work out with me. Um, I have a Peloton bike. But when I started campaigning for this Bear County judge position, I've had no time, no time at all. <laughs> and it, it's wearing on me. Um, but I, I love to exercise a lot. And then um, I, love, I love to watch Netflix. Mm. that's you know i love to escape and watch all kinds of stuff <laughs> <laughs> favorite show favorite show um don't tell me bridgerton right, no <laughs> i do like it but okay. i i'm in love with promised land i don't know if you've seen that mm -hmm. it was it's a la it's about the like a latino family mm -hmm. that that owns a winery in napa and it originally it was on abc and i'm really upset because i guess it didn't do so well oh. now it's on hulu but it's a all latino cast practically latino writers it's it's amazing it talks about some of the the characters were migrant workers that went mm. to pick the grapes and then w one of them grew up and now owns this winery right oh, it's very okay. dynasty <laughs> um but i love it i love it y'all should watch it if you can nice yeah. nice yeah i i i like doing um the the game wardens for some reason like watching the game wardens um, yeah I, I don't know i just i just like just because i love the uh, like i love the parks i love state parks i just like to see just some of the crazy stuff that happens on there i also like yellowstone oh i love yellowstone and mm. um is it mayor of king's kingstown or the same writer kingston kingstown oh, okay that's a good one about really? the prisons oh it's the same writer creator so with that yeah I know there's been a big like issue with Bear County and the 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 jail that's a Bear County jail. How do you plan to fix that relationship to to be able to get stronger, to be able to help Bear County Jail and the Sheriff's Department to make it better because there's been a lot of issues with that. I mean, how what do you envision? There I you know, I was a Bear Bear County prosecutor from 2000 to 2006. Okay. Even back then, the jail had issues mm -hmm. the same, pretty much, uh, whether it was overcrowding, and then it became an issue of overtime, how much they've got to spend in overtime. A lot of, of, of the, um, you know, the rank and file having to, f having to work extensive overtime, not feeling, you know, they, they worry about the working conditions in mm -hmm. the jail too. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big problem, and um, it, it's, we gotta resolve it. I know, Look, there was a uh, commissioner's court had requested that a study be done. I don't know if that's been done yet. Implemented. It was yeah. impl <laughs> implemented, right? Because yeah. I would love to see what proposals are in that study. So number one, my whole thing is if it's not been done yet, that study has to be implemented. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to talk to, you know, visiting with the deputies, visiting with the sheriff and trying to find out what's going on here. What are the resources that are needed? But I care about the fact that you've got to think about officer safety in the jails. Um, you've got to also think about, you know, the people that are in there, yeah. you know, as well, their health and safety matters as well. And so overall, um, it's just a big problem that we need to address. You, you can't keep saying there's not a problem when there obviously is one. Right. Um, but it's going to have to be, you know, the, the Bear County judges is, is really critical here and, and how to, Talk with both sides, you know, get expert opinion, um, again, figuring out what are the steps that are necessary to implement, um, admitting what doesn't work, um, not being afraid to make those bold, mm -hmm. you know, bold decisions and, and, and putting some leadership there and, and then maybe at one point saying, well, this isn't working, we got to go in another direction. Right. But uh, yeah, this is something huge. We yeah. Gotta, we got to fix it. Yeah, because from what I've heard uh, recently is... Um they have taken away the radios from some of the inmates and now they can't even, cause they were listening to uh, some Christian music. Mm -hmm. They took that away. Yeah. And so it's like, man, like you're, you're, you're taking away an avenue of possible, a different light. And you know, it's, it's that's, that's important. That's, you know, you think hard. about the, uh, the female, the women, mm -hmm. I don't think we talk much no. at all about the, the female inmates that are in there. Um, I don't know if you knew, but you know, this last legislative session, maybe two sessions ago, um, we passed providing feminine care products to female mm. prisoners because they weren't getting them. Oh, wow. I mean, the most basics, yeah. basic needs. Yeah. Um, and I, th I don't think we also talk about the fact that a lot of the, 
you know, resources or uh, classes that are offered to male inmates, um, they don't have they don't have the same type of resources right. offered to the female inmates. Yeah. Um, and so, we the jail is is a place we don't we don't want people in there. I mean, look, yeah. that the the worst of the worst, you know, need to go do their time. And and that's another thing issue with this overcrowding is that the state has an obligation the prisons to come pick up the prisoners that have the long lengthy sentences, and they're not doing that. Mm. Okay. So that also adds to the overcrowding problem. But, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, the officers are safe, the detention officers. We want to make sure that the inmates are safe as well. Um, but, you know, taxpayers are paying a whole lot of money in overtime. Right. right. Yeah. So there's a lot to, lot to, lot to fix there. Yeah. And, and, and you know, because I honestly personally experienced it, not myself, but, um, you know, I know somebody who was, who, who was a female that was in there um, that they offered her okay, do you want to take this course to help you when you get out? Or do you want to get out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, we're going to choose to get out. So it's like, you can't really, it's not really wise because it's like, you know, of course yeah, you're going to choose the faster way out rather right. than stay in and try to get yourself better. But if you don't get that to them first, like it's not, not helpful. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's probably, it was a situation where are they offering... You know, it was this was this class or s service given to her? Like, was it pretrial diversion or was it part of probation? It, it's right. Like, but yeah. but if you think about it, you're in the mindset of I just want to get out of right. jail. And and here's yeah. the other problem. You know, you've got people that are in jail and just can't afford to bond out. Yeah. Um. You've got the jail should not be a place to house poor people. It should not be a place to house mentally ill people. Mm. Um. You mm. know. So. There's a lot of issues, I mean, yeah. policy-wise. Yeah, definitely. Um, where do you see yourself in five years? In five years? Mm -hmm. Oh, I would love to be doing my second term as county judge. Okay. Where do you see the community in five years? You know, the community, I think we're going to be definitely, I, I foresee us in a more prosperous place. I think I would, I think the digital divide will be something that, is, is going to be narrowed mm -hmm. and closing. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see us having economic opportunity. We're going to, we're going to be huge. The population is going to be huge in five years. Yeah. You know, we, we talk about, you know, the state always praises itself because we want people to move. We want businesses to come to Texas, come to Texas. And now we're like, no, and stop. now we're like, uh, <laughs> you know, we're, cause we have people moving here, but we're not putting any money into like our infrastructure. Right. You know, we have a lot of stress on, on, <laughs> on our roads. We've got, we need to figure out how we handle the growth and we, we need to do it in a smart way. Right. Yeah. Well, and public transportation is something I've, I've heard a lot that, you know, it's not accessible. Or I think with the Via Link, hopefully that'll expand more and more. But it's just been terrible for people just to try to get using public transportation, you know. Right. And, and I know some people say, well, there's not that many people writing it. Some people say there is. I don't know. It's it's one of those things that I think there's something that's there that's somebody's confused about. Yeah, and I think um, it, it comes down to accessibility. I think, you know, yeah. I don't know, but my, my nephew and niece, they're, you know, one's in law school, one's about to finish college. They don't want to drive, <laughs> okay? <laughs> it's, a, it's that age group. I'm really finding it. They don't want to drive. They would love to have public transportation options, you mm. know, whether it's uh, not just buses, but if it's like a light rail, whatever. I'm, I'm hearing that from younger people that they say, what are the options? What can we do for, I don't want to drive. I want, right. you know, I want to be able to take a bus. I want to be able to take a train. I want to be able, I want to have options. And, mm. and that's something we need to have a real discussion about. Right. Because I think the will is there, mm -hmm. um, but we need to have multimodal options for people. Right, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, with uh, Judge Wolf leaving, how do you see the commissioner courts changing? Well, it's, it's, it's already been changing. Yeah. Um, you know, you have, uh, you know, my colleague, uh, Commissioner Justin Rodriguez, mm -hmm. um, coming in, and he was the budget guru for us on the state level. And, mm -hmm. and you know, he's, he's really hands-on on the budget here for the county. Mm -hmm. We have, uh, you know, Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores. Uh, it, it was wonderful to see, you know, two women come in on the court. Um, so it, it's changing. It's, it's, a, it's a different look, and I think... Um, 
you know, we have now uh, Commissioner Maria Lynn Bernard mm -hmm. coming in. Um, so it's, it's a diversity now. There's diversity on the court. Um, I'd love to see that women are on the court now. Um, and I think it's just going to change. I don't foresee it continuing before when I talked about things were very, were not transparent. You right. didn't know what was going on back there. Mm -hmm. um, that's slowly evolving. And so I think the court, I, I, what I foresee is it's going to work well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got very, you know, they're independently elected, every commissioner. Yeah. They're, they're serving the, the, the voters uh, of their precincts. Um, I think it's going to be, it'll, of course, not all of us will agree, but at the end of the day, it's going to be a really effective commissioner's court. I'm excited about it. Yeah. I like the change. Like I said, I like to see change <laughs> come in. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with that, I mean, do you think that there's going to be um, more involvement from the community with commissioner's court? There is. There is. Yeah. Um, because, because the community... I hear them saying, well, what does the county do? What, you know, I think a lot of focus had been on the city mm. and, and what the different council members were doing. And now it's the focus is on, well, what does Bear County Commissioner's Court do? Yeah. So, yeah, there, you're going to have it's a lot a of. It's not a court. <laughs> right. It's not a court, number one. So yeah. it's, it's not a court as you, mm -hmm. in the traditional sense. It's what is the role that, that it has in government and it, there needs to be accountability there. I think a lot of our of our allied, you know, organizations, a lot of our grassroots, mm -hmm. I mean, they they want to be involved and they right. want accountability. So most definitely. And and I think again when you talked about the new commissioners coming in, that's new ideas. Mm -hmm. It's a new way of thinking about things. It's 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 I, I think it's a great time. Yeah. Yeah. Um with University Health System and Bear and Bear County Commissioners Court. Do you think there's something needs to be changed with that, or you think it's running fairly well since there's that partnership? I think it can always get better. Okay. I I, li I like I, I think they've they're really they've done wonderful things. Um, I think they're a, they're a model. Nothing is perfect. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I I what I've always worried about were the health care deserts in our community. You know, I feel the South Side you know needs health care, quality health care, yes. accessibility, yes. the east side, you know, there's there's areas all throughout the county that that need it, especially when people don't have the transportation to get mm -hmm. to doctors. Right. And so I know that Commissioner Rodriguez has unveiled a new public health initiative that's going to address some of those health deserts, but I, I don't know the details yet. But oh, no, things can always get better and get okay. improved. Okay. Yeah. Um, last question. Who are who's your favorite like musical artist or band? Oh man, I uh, there's gotta be somebody. No, <laughs> I love Los Tigres del Norte. Okay, I mean, right. come on, I was I'm from El Paso. <laughs> I love them. Um, yeah, they're they're wonderful, and I love. Uh, have you seen their their concert on on Netflix? No, -uh. oh, I need to watch the documentary. Really, it's really good. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my favorite. yeah I, I I love music, so it's like whatever it is. I'm like, oh, I love it. Yeah. Well, not whatever. I don't like country. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't like country. Uh, but what about local? Do you have any local artists that? Because um, there's there's a lot of local artists, and I think San Antonio, Bear County, we do not show enough love to musical artists, and it's hard because a lot of people are like, okay, well, I'm out of here. I yeah, gotta go leave. somewhere else. And they so leave. they go to Austin. Yeah. So what can we do to make things better like for our, our musical community we need to we need to you know we're, we're we're the capital of arts and culture and music right so that's what they uh, say yeah. but we we really we really need to encourage an environment you know so that they could really flourish i want i i wish i could tell you who my local favorite musician is but i i don't have one yeah. all right um but if we could definitely imagine a music scene imagine mm a place where they can flourish and share their talents yeah. you know and stay here right and want to contribute to the yeah. community we lose them to la we lose them to austin to houston to houston yeah houston yep. yeah yeah a yep. lot of them they're, they're just like all right <laughs> and i think we we have the ability to have you know the market here there's there's you know there's definitely an avenue i just think that um you look at things like what's happening on saint mary's mm -hmm. There's so much arguments with the, with the neighborhood and the, the, the clubs, you know, the club owners. scene. It's just, it's, it's hard, uh, you know, and, and that just widens the gap there. Right. You know, so maybe we have a music district. 
or something. I would love a music district. Right? Yeah. I <laughs> we mean, have we everything have, else. <laughs> we have, you know, I'm looking at Southtown as kind of like the restaurant district, right? Kind of yeah. in its own way. But I, I think there could definitely be a music venue district. Yeah. I mean, we've got we got a lot of we've got a lot of areas that I mean, I would love to see it on the south side. I mean, east side we have we have opportunity there. Yeah. yeah. And I would love to see it in a place that hasn't really had its opportunity to shine yet. Yeah. And as long as it doesn't affect the property owners. Exactly. The homeowners. <laughs> yes. You want the homeowners happy. Right, we don't want, right. We don't want them coming with well, pitchforks. Well, that, that was the whole thing with the Lone Star District is people, you know, like, oh, here comes another developer. And what do they do? They back out. So Yeah. It, there's it, a lot of, I mean, promise there. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's just frustration. And it's like, you know, and that's that's what I, I don't know if it's, if it has something to do with it's not beneficial for those developers you know are they not getting enough money but that's the thing is we shouldn't be you know if you want to be here then be here but be you here. need to contribute right. you know what i mean right and so I, it's just one of those anyway <laughs> um any last words that you want to say that uh you want to talk about your campaign how do people find you oh, okay so you can find me uh i have a website vote the number four ena.org um, you know, this is a really important race. You'll see a whole lot of information on my website kind of goes into the weeds of who I am and the work that I've done at the legislature. But I also, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. <laughs> um, but what I will say is, TikTok. look, tic- no, no, I'm not ready for TikTok yet. Look, you almost said it, no. I'm, not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I love to watch everyone's TikToks, but I, I'm just not ready for that yet. Hopefully soon. But, uh, you know, I, what I will say is, you know, elections matter. Elections mm. are really important. Um, you know, we have a city bond election coming up in May. So mm. however you feel on that, May 7th. But along with that election, there is... Um, uh, some important amendments. Uh, one is a to increase the homestead exemption. Um, you know that can bring 60 million dollars to Bear County homeowners. But you got to vote for it. That's something that I worked on in the legislature. Mm. Um, and so please, un- if you want property tax relief, you got to vote May 7th. <laughs> and then I need you all to come back out <laughs> right. again. You know, May 24th uh, is the election day for the Bear County Judge uh, runoff, as well as some other, you know, races that are right. run- runoffs right. too. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, that, and that's 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 such a important thing. Like, there's a lot of things that people are like, well, there's always elections. Well, yeah, there's different elections. There's different things. There's runoffs. There's you know, um, they all cost money. So might as well yeah. go and, and and go vote if, if right. it's going to come out of taxpayer money. If, you know, you know, might as well go vote. Uh, you know, unfortunately, if you're voting for a third party, you cannot vote in primaries. So that's the other thing. Um, but yeah, just definitely, it's it's definitely one of those things that you want to make sure that you know, you understand what's going on in our election system, in our in our local right. races, because it's it's all cool when you're focusing on Washington or whatever. But mm. at the end of the day, it's it's what's happening here. This is where you get affected. Right. The right. local level is where everyone gets affected their yeah. pocketbook gets affected <laughs> i mean really you really need to get involved and care about yeah. what's going on in your community definitely well thank you you know i appreciate it and thank you everybody for joining um the first episode for the season uh so see it wasn't that no, bad right so thank you for joining alamo city agenda um and just stay tuned for the next interview um see y'all